Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Review and Review. And today, we are going to have a very special review of the Razer Phone 2. Now, why is it special? It's because we did not take it straight out of the box. We actually had it as our daily phone for about a week. And we're going to give it our super honest review. Honest review, really honest. And you know, I've, played, I've been playing a few games on this. And mm -hmm. really, it's, it's really optimized, you know, some games I play on it. This phone is definitely better than its predecessor, the Razer Phone. And the Razer phone was actually known as a gaming phone, not much of a lifestyle phone. So with the Razer phone 2, Razer has actually upped a few of its specs to actually match up on par with other flagship phones. For example, the Razer phone 2 now has a Gorilla Glass 5 back, which means it is now able to do wireless charging. So as the previous phone did not have a glass back for the wireless charger, and this one now is available for wireless charging. And seeing that this is also water and dust resistance, it means that you can now play in the toilet without having to worry because I'm honestly a toilet gamer. You drop your phones in the toilet then? Worst case scenario, I do. So the Razer phone is initially known as a gaming phone, but Razer is trying to reposition this phone as a gaming slash lifestyle phone. And that's why they switched up the processor to a Snapdragon 845 with 8GB of RAM and also an internal storage of 64GB. But, but, wait, there's more. You can also get an external storage of up to 1TB. Oh. Yep, you can actually expand it up to 2TB as well if you can find a micro SD that supports up to 2TB, you yeah, know. Please tell me if you find one. Uh, yes. Affordable one. Uh. An affordable one, oh, please. Yes. Please tell me. So what is a Razer phone without your RGB Chroma logo? Yeah. So this RGB Chroma logo is actually customizable on the Chroma app on your phone. So for your RGB backlight, there's actually three different modes. The breathing mode, the static mode, and the spectrum mode. So in breathing mode, what it does is that the light turns on and off. So it's like breathing like... <gasps> And for static mode, it just stays still for the whole time. It's just static, like... And for spectrum mode, it's turned on and the colour will constantly change. You can see that? I don't think you can see that, but you know, I can see it. It looks cool as hell. Yes. And there are three different modes for this backlight. So when it's turned down to low, it will only light up when there's a notification. When it's set into medium, means your backlight will only turn on if your phone is unlocked. Mm -hmm. And when it's turned on to high, it, it means it will be there forever, that's right. Wow. Also, the colour changes depending on what kind of notification you get. Like, you know, if someone calls you, it's green. If you get an email, it's red. And if you get a tweet, it's blue. You know, because Twitter, blue, tweet, tweet. So with a screen size of 5.7 inch and a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, it's nothing really groundbreaking. But the only thing that stands out for me is the refresh rate of 120 hertz. Oh, that's impressive. Like usually phones only have like 60 hertz, right? Yes. Yeah, because as a gamer, you know, with 120 hertz, I'm gonna get less lag, less stutters, and less dead pixels. You know, whenever I move around too fast. Yeah, it's not even just game, just the phone itself, you can actually tell that it's super smooth. I mean, you can't really tell on camera, you would have to use it to actually see it. Because seeing is... Believing. Exactly, you took the words right out of my mouth. The Razer Phone 2 does not have a notch, but it has a very obvious bezel and a very unimpressive screen-to-body ratio. But they added in these front-facing dual speakers powered by Dolby Atmos 5.1 surround system. Wow, that's actually damn powerful. Like, this might be the loudest phone I'm holding right now. But you know what, Vince? It is the loudest phone right now on the market. I'm not even kidding, okay? Using this phone every day as my alarm system, I haven't been late to work once. But it's not just how loud this is, alright? I mean, do you play PUBG with earpiece or without earpiece? I play with earpiece, actually. Alright, do you know that you can actually play this without an earpiece as oh, well? Oh, because it's surround sound, right? It's surround sound. So the speakers will actually tell you where people are. So it is actually quite accurate when it comes to surround sound. Like if there's someone shooting on your right, you can actually hear it from the speaker on the right here. If it's someone shooting from the left, you can actually hear it from the shooting from the left here. So this being a gaming phone, you probably expect this to have a longer battery life and you're not wrong. Yep. It does have a longer battery life. It's at 4,000 milliampers. Now, if you're thinking if that's big enough, if we compare it to an iPhone X Max, it has 3,200 milliampers. And this has 4,000. So that's a big difference right now. So you can play your games on your phone without having to worry about your phone dying off too early. And to top it off, this phone is actually going for 800 USD on the market right now. Which is actually quite reasonable because this is the only phone in the market which has 120 hertz. I don't see any other phone with 120 hertz. Honestly, I can use this phone and play my games on the MRT, on the train, without any problems at all. Because if I stand my phone too long on the train, I would actually get giddy. But with the very high refresh rate, it's actually super clear and I 
have no problem playing it on the MRT. And that alone is already justifiable for price. Exactly. And also in regards to the predecessor, Razer has finally upped the level of the camera. What better way to prove it is to go outside and test it out, right? So after using the Razer Phone 2 for about a week, I can honestly say that night photography is not a stronger suit. The camera is now equipped with dual 12MP lens with a dual Sony IMX sensor with a wide-angle lens of an aperture of 1.75 with optical image stabilization and a telephoto lens with an aperture of 2.6 and without optical image stabilization. Now the front camera has an 8 megapixel lens and an aperture of 2.0, but the camera lacks facial recognition and a slow-mo mode. And the camera can actually record videos at 4K at 30 FPS. It's kind of hot out here, yeah? Alright, so Vince, after a week of using this phone, what do you think about it? Well, I really like this phone. It's made my mobile gaming experience much better, but sometimes I feel like it's kind of too big on my hands. Mm -hmm. But I can probably get used to it after a while, you know? Yes. For me, when I use this phone, I actually lower down my standards just a bit, but to see how Razer jumped from Razer 1 to Razer 2, I actually think it's a huge improvement. Now, the camera still needs a lot of work, but for the gaming aspect of this phone, it's seriously unmatched. And can you believe how well Razer Phone 3 will do? Because I believe that Razer Phone 3, if it ever comes out, will actually be way much more better than this. Yeah man, it'll turn into a transformer after a while. But for now, I think I can still use it as my daily phone. Alright guys, so thanks for watching this episode of Review Review. And do let us know in the comment section below on your thoughts of the Razer Phone. It can be the Razer Phone 1 or 2, but then like, tell us about the Razer Phone 2. Because we're talking about this one. Yes. <laughs> so guys, do remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel for future videos, and we'll see you next time. Next time, indeed. See ya. Ciao. Put your pop, pop, pop. What? <laughs> <laughs>